Hi, I'm Rob Richardson. Welcome to Gaining Confidence with Cypress Tests. I'm really glad that we get to join you. Today, we're going to dig into building Cypress Tests. And here's the part where I tell you I'm definitely going to post the slides on my site tonight. <laughs> I've been that attendee chasing the speaker, and it hasn't worked out for me either, which is why you can go to robrich.org right now. Click on presentations up here at the top. Here's Gaining Confidence with Cypress Tests. The slides and the code up on GitHub is available online right now. While you're on robrich.org, let's click on About Me and learn about some of the things that I've done recently. I'm a Cyril developer advocate, a Microsoft MVP, a Docker captain, a friend of Redgate. And let me tell you about AZ Give Camp. AZ Give Camp brings volunteer developers together with charities to build free software. We start building software Friday after work. Sunday afternoon, we deliver that completed software to the charity. Sleep is optional, caffeine provided. If you're in Phoenix, come join us for the next AZ Give Camp. Free, or if you'd like a Give Camp closer to you, hit me up on email or Twitter and let's get a Give Camp in your neighborhood too. Some of the other things that I've done, I worked on Gulp on version two and version three as a core contributor. And <laughs> I replied to a .NET Rocks podcast episode. They read my comment on the air and they sent me a mug. Woohoo! So there's my claim to fame, my coveted .NET Rocks mug. So let's dig into gaining confidence with Cypress tests. We talked about this guy. Now, I'm not quite sure how this is going to go. So let me kick this off and see if my talk is going to go OK today. Here's the part where uh, we'll see if this site works. We've got our Cypress test coming up. Here's our TypeScript compile. Yeah, it looks like it may work out pretty well today. That's great. Ooh, yes. Yes, my site is online. Everything's going to work great. So let's dig in. Cypress is browser-based functional tests. Or said differently, Cypress is end-to-end -end tests. Now. Cypress is built on top of Mocha and Chai. So if you've ever built tests in Mocha or Chai, you'll feel right at home. It's also a browser plugin that integrates deeply in with the browser. Like many good stories, <laughs> we just started in the middle. Let's back up and begin at the beginning. When I'm looking at browser testing, I'll use lots of different tools to accomplish different types of tests. And let's take a look through those. I might have tests from here down. Um, end to end tests. I might have testing this API, firing requests at a REST API or GraphQL or gRPC API. I might test the service, and by service, I mean a little unit of functionality, unit tests. I might test this component. That's where we start to build in user experience things. We're still not validating the website, but we're starting to click buttons and see what happens. And we might test that this works in this browser where we validate that it works the same in Internet Explorer as it does in Safari. Now, with HTML5 and evergreen browsers, that's less of a concern, but it still is a concern to validate that our site works in all of the browsers that we expect. So as you grab these slides from robrich.org, you can click on each of these blue links to learn more about that particular project. If I'm doing unit tests, I'll use Mocha with Chai or Jest. If I'm trying to run those unit tests in a particular browser, I'll use Karma. Now, Karma doesn't run end-to-end -end tests. Karma runs unit tests in a particular browser. If I'm trying to run component tests, tests where I'm validating user interactions with specific components, I'll use test utils. Now, we have the option to mock out or render the child components, and that can be really helpful in understanding how components interact. With API tests, I'm just going to fire requests at an API. I don't need a browser at all. And with end-to-end -end tests, I might use Selenium, Cypress, Test Cafe, or Playwright. So let's double click into end-to-end -end tests and take a look at those. Selenium kind of crafted this user experience, this end-to-end -end test methodology. Now, Selenium is great, but Selenium creates brittle, slow tests. Selenium will just drive my mouse and click on things. It isn't deeply integrated into the browser. So if ever my test isn't ready yet, then I'll probably increase the timeouts. And well, that makes my test slow. 
Or if it just wasn't ready this time, I'll rerun my tests and hopefully they'll pass this time. Selenium is famous for <laughs> slow and brittle tests. It is written in many languages. There are some recorders built into browsers and the web driver spec is kind of a browser standard now. So Selenium is really compatible. If you have tests in Selenium, then that's great. Next up, Cypress. Now Cypress takes a different approach where it creates a browser plugin that is able to interact with the browser in a really elegant way. We can wait for a DOM ready event. And as soon as that element is visible or rendered, then we can continue on the test. We don't have to wait the full second or two. It is an Electron IDE that allows us to be able to launch the things, but we can also launch them headless as well. It uses a jQuery-like syntax, so we end up with a dot .then method. Now, it's a little bit weird. We can't await it, but it gets it done. The major downside to Cypress is we don't have Safari support. Because it integrates deeply with the browser, we must have a plugin in each browser. Next up, Test Cafe. If you've worked in Dev Express, then Test Cafe is probably right at home. Now, Test Cafe does do um, CSS selectors, which will make it really elegant but it has kind of an odd assertion syntax, and you'll end up marshalling content back and forth between the page and the test. Similarly, with Playwright, you'll end up marshalling content back and forth between the page and the test. Playwright is built by the developers who built Puppeteer, and if you've ever test-driven a browser with Puppeteer, you'll feel right at home with Playwright. The assertion syntax does feel like a bolt-on to Puppeteer, but this may be perfect for you. Puppeteer uh, Playwright, rather, has uh, extensions in lots of different languages. So unlike Cypress, where you must code in JavaScript or TypeScript, Playwright allows you to code in many different languages. Now, ultimately, there isn't really a bad choice here. And if you find a tool that you'd like, then that's perfect. Let's double click into Cypress because <laughs> that's what this talk is about. First step, we need to install it. We'll npm install this and npx Cypress open. Now, the first time you open it, it will pop up, it'll build out a bunch of tests, a bunch of kitchen sink tests. Now, this is great. It flexes all of the different pieces of our of a website up on Cypress's um, domain so that you can understand how all things interact. Now, in this case, I'm going to open up a specific test and let's run this particular test. Actually, before we do that, let's take a little bit further wander. I've close this folder, we can choose to run all tests or we can double click on one to run our particular test. We can also choose what browser to run it in. Now it's telling me that I have a Chrome setting that Firefox doesn't like, but you can see all the browsers that are installed on my machine, including Electron, which is a browser built into the Cypress IDE. It's actually a WebKit browser. So once we click on a test, then it will launch that test. Now, in my case, I'm running my tests in TypeScript instead of JavaScript. So we do see one flash where it does that TypeScript compile. But then once we've got that TypeScript compile ready to go, we will launch into each test inside of a browser. Now, notice this isn't my regular Chrome. This is this new Chrome profile so that all of the browser plugins and settings and cookies that I've used previously won't leak into my new tests. Now, these tests will run and the cool part is it's not just driving the browser, but rather interacting with it in a very deep way. It is a browser, so at each step, I can go look around and get a sense of what it's doing. Now, I love how it puts in this red dot right here to say where it clicked to be able to do this action. Now, it is a browser, so if I pull up the F12 developer tools and flip over to console, I can see the uh, console results at each stage. And I can also flip over to the sources and start to interact with my tests just by creating a breakpoint and refreshing my tests and be able to step through my tests in that way. That's really elegant. This browser also, I can click on the selector playground and I can go select particular things and it will help me build out that CSS selector that I need to get to exactly that piece. Now we'll come back to selectors and see how we can optimize this, but this uh, Cypress IDE is a great way to be able to, re to run the tests. I can rerun them, and we can see that it's going to fire off each stage of my test doing what it needs to do. 
Now that's great. I know that my site is working because I know that it's doing all the tasks that it needs to do. Now, in this case, this uh, test is based on to do MVC. To do MVC is a really elegant way where they provide HTML and CSS and invite each browser, each uh, framework manufacturer to build the to do MVC mechanism in their chosen system. So if we pop open into the code, we can see exactly that. I've used to do MVC as my test. Now, the first thing that we'll need to do, we'll start with cypress.json. Once we um, npm install cypress, then this cypress.json gets us started in all of the pieces. Our first step is the plugins file. And in this case, I'm using TypeScript. So we'll go straight to there, and that will identify the rest of the configuration. I have my fixtures in the fixtures folder. I have my integration in the integration. That's where all my tests are. I have my screenshots and videos in a results folder so that I can very specifically exclude them from my um, commit results. And then my support file will come back to plugins in a bit. Now, this is TypeScript. So at the base of my project, I have my regular TypeScript compile details. Here's my configuration, and it knows nothing of Cypress. Inside my Cypress folder, I have another TS config. And this TS config is just the details needed to be able to kick off Cypress. Now, I'm going to choose to extend my base one so that I don't need to duplicate all my content, and then just include the options associated with Cypress. Now, in my package JSON, I may choose to create some shortcuts. So for example, my Cypress open command, I'm just going to npm run cy.open, and that will open the IDE that we saw. By comparison, I could do Cypress run, which will run in headless mode, and that's great for DevOps pipelines. I can also specify, in this case, I specified specifically headless and the browser that I wanted to run. So now I have three tasks, one for each browser, and I can string them all together. So if I say npm run test, it will run all the tests in all three browsers. And if all three pass, then now I know my site works in all of the browsers. So let's dig into that to do MVC that we were looking at previously. Now, the cool part about this is we could switch between various frameworks. And so I could uncomment this and fire up a different framework. But in this case, I'll use the AngularJS one. I just grabbed the site name so that I could describe it nicely here in my test results. And then before each one, I'm going to go visit that site. Now, I could do this at the beginning of each test, but I'm doing it here in a before each so that I know that that site is loaded by the time I kick off my first step. My first test is checking the URL. Now, this is great because when I first wrote this talk, the site was HTTP, and then they flipped it over to HTTPS before I presented it. And so this was able to help me understand that that change had been made. It's also great if we're testing a site to know that, hey, the page that I'm testing might have moved. Maybe this isn't the site that I was expecting to test. Let's level up. Now we want to go look in with the CSS selector to look for to-do items. Now, I haven't created any yet, so of course the list will be empty. And we can see this jQuery-like syntax, dot should not exist. <laughs> yeah, it's a magic string, but uh, all this being equal, I would rather have chai syntax of should dot not dot exist, but I get it. Let's level up again and start interacting with the page. So let me go get the new to-do box, and I will type in that new to-do box and push Enter. So I'll go now look into my to-do list and validate that I have that new to-do and that my to-do box is empty. Now, notice that we're not awaiting anything. There's no promises that we need to resolve. By the time this task finishes, we know that all the JavaScript events associated with that event have finished. That's perfect. We can see the standard arrange, act, and assert syntax for tests, and we're using that here in Cypress as well. Let's do another test, should mark to do completed. Now, I'm going to create a new to do. And so here, let me type that new to do and push Enter. Now, this Enter is uh, not in blue. We don't have a dollar sign before it. This enter is a specific character. We can use shift, control, various function keys, anything that you can type on a keyboard, you can put inside these curly braces. 
and Cypress will be able to type that as well. So let me type in a relevant to-do so that I make sure that I mark the correct one as complete. And then I'll type this to-do, and I'll go look for my um, to-do and click on the toggle button. Now that marks it as complete. And as when it's complete, it should have a completed CSS class on it. So let me go find the to-do that has that and validate that it is completed. Let's level up again. Let's Next, let's delete a to-do. Now I'm going to type in a relevant to-do and my new to-do so that I make sure that I'm deleting the correct one. And then let me go find that to-do that has this new to-do in it. Now this is kind of a jQuery-like thing. I go look for a view, and then I give it a filter syntax. We can talk about creating CSS selectors that will make that less problematic. But now let me go find the destroy button. Now this destroy button only shows up if I mouse over that element. Now in this case, we're running JavaScript events. We're not running CSS events. We're not running browser DOM events. So that CSS, there is no mouse over inside JavaScript. So I'm going to say force is true. Now this will click on the the button even though it's not visible. And that's perfect in this case to be able to get at that content. So let's go grab the list. We should have a length of one. And we should include that irrelevant. Um, it should the list should now only include that irrelevant to do. Perfect. Let's level up again. Now, as we've been creating these to-dos, we've been typing to that to-do and push enter. That's kind of getting old. Can we abstract that away? Can we create a to-do add command? That's where the support comes in really elegantly. We can build commands. So let's import these commands. And here's the command that I want to build. I want to build to-do add. I'll take in a string. I'll type that string. And I'll just do a quick check while I'm here to validate that once I finish typing it, that that's no longer in place. So now back in my list, I can just run my to-do add function and do all the things. Now, in this case, I'm in TypeScript. So I do need to tell TypeScript that this command is a thing. Um, back in the Cypress docs, we can take a look at the mechanism for building this um, command. So let's build the command. And then let's build a TypeScript declaration file that shows us how to run that command. So I have my command. And then I also have my TypeScript declaration file. Perfect. So now here in TypeScript, I can start to describe the behaviors that I'm doing. Now, the beauty here is that I've abstracted away the construct of how to perform this action. I'm describing this in user terms or in business terms. So now my test becomes a lot more legible and terse. If ever I need to modify this content, I can modify it in one place. And that's how I make this happen. If you've ever used Selenium's page objects, this will feel right at home. So I built a to-do add method, and I can use that to very specifically describe what's going on here. And I've I have a to do complete method as well here in my support, which will go mark that, uh, go click that complete button. Let's sh only show completed tasks. And we can see that creating these commands was really helpful. Now I could create a command to click the completed button, but in this case, I'll probably only do that once. So I'll just do it in line. Now, yeah, that uh, CSS is a little awkward. Let's come back to creating really elegant selectors. Should, complete, should clear completed tasks, we're doing a similar thing. And we can tell how legible this test is because we've used those actions. We'll create a new to-do, we'll mark it complete, we'll clear the completed, and we should have a length of zero inside of our completed task list. Now that was really elegant, we were able to build up a bunch of tests that validate that our site works correctly. Now, in this case, it's not a site that I can control. It's a site that's just running. We could do that in production, where we run a bunch of tests against our site. So we, let's level up again and look at Hacker News PWA. Now, this is kind of the spiritual successor to, to do MVC, where they build um, websites in uh, consuming Hacker News. Now, in this case, it's making an actual request off to that URL. And I may not have control over that URL. So let's start off with our test. We build a similar one validating that our site works. And now we want to validate that it has a specific top story. In this case, we need to create a fixture. Let's intercept this URL. I could use a string. In this case, I used a regular expression. 
and I grabbed this fixture. Now this fixture includes a specific set of results. I can mock out the resulting API and get a particular set. So now I can validate that the first um, story is as I expect, and I can validate other details of how I render this control. I've faked out the API result. Now, it would be really easy to create a bunch of tests, completely ignoring or faking out the API, and give myself a false sense of security. So I'm also going to going to create a test that will actually hit the real API and validate that my site will behave correctly. Now, in this case, I could choose to intercept the API, name it, and then specifically wait for it if it's going to take a really long time. But in this case, I'm pretty sure that it'll run render in time and that Hacker News will have 30 stories. So let's come back into Cypress, not that one, and run our Hacker News tests. And in some cases, we can mock out the API if we want to test our component in very specific ways. And in other places, we'll use the actual API so that we don't completely lie to ourselves about how the API may behave. If the API changes and our tests don't notice because we're only using mock APIs, then we may never know. So we're going to go hit the real API, but then we'll set in place our fixture. Now we can validate that our uh, fake data renders the way we expect. And then we have one test that loads the actual Hacker News data. That's perfect. So we were able to see some really elegant things inside of Cypress and be able to see how we could validate our website performs correctly. Now, we wanted to look at uh, selectors. We could definitely create CSS selectors based on the way our website is built. But a better mechanism is to level up to using an ID or a class, because that's much more descriptive. If ever we rewrite the HTML on our website, we need to be able to get back to exactly that element. So creating a class or an ID makes that more descriptive. Even better, we could create a data element and give it a data-cy attribute. Now, this data-cy attribute, we can now, in our get statement, go look for that attribute and the very specific step that we had for this test. Now that's ideal. We know that we're going to get exactly the right element, but we're also describing our content to others. If ever I'm modifying a web page and I'm modifying a data-cy element, I know that there's a test that I'll probably also need to care for. Now this is great. It documents its purpose. It documents, um, it makes this descriptive. You may wonder, well, am I leaking testing details into production? Well, yes, but now you can run your Cypress test in production as well. Now, don't click the purchase button, but wouldn't it be nice if you knew that you could get from your homepage through your shop, through your product catalog, put things in your shopping ca cart and get to that purchase page without your users telling you the site is down? Run that test in production all the time with this data-cy attributes. Next up, we looked at how we could intercept content and put in fixtures. Fixtures are great when you need to be able to put in fake data and uh, mock out those specific details. If you have a lot of data, rather than building that JSON inline, reference a fixture instead. Um, one of the, another best practice, don't log into the website with every request. <laughs> you do want to validate your login procedure, but you want to do that once. And then for all the rest of the tests, go get a token that you can reuse. Maybe you hit a, an API that's only enabled in test to be able to get that login token. Or maybe you're calling the page behind the scenes that just posts that login details. Go grab that token, use that token in the rest of the tests, and now you're not re-repeating your login page with each test. Your tests will run faster. We used fixtures to be able to mock out test data, and it does make our tests more terse, and we can then focus on the business logic at hand. Now, similarly with APIs, we can mock out our APIs using these, this text test content, but be careful that you don't just use your test API results. You want to also run tests that hit the real API so that you can validate in case the API's data shape changes. 
Cypress is a great place to be able to create these end-to-end -end functional tests that allow us to validate that our site works from start to end. And we can run these tests in any environment. Let's run them in our DevOps pipeline, but let's also run them in production so that we can catch when our website goes down before our users tell us. Cypress is a great place to run. I love getting to present it to you here. If you're watching this video later, hit me up on, e on Twitter at Rob underscore Rich. If you're here live in the conference, I'll join you in that spot where the conference is designated. And you can grab both the slides and the code right now at robrich.org. Thanks for coming.